Drawing souls, you know, love draws. 
re rejected people. Right. You can't draw what you point at. Uh -huh. So he's giving us the instruction. He's preparing us for the moment that he's talking about right now. But he says he's going to send a comforter, which means he's sending the very one that caused him or allowed him to go through life the way he went through. You know, he, can, he went through sinless. He didn't have no sin in him. But he had given us the comforter so that we we not sin free because we all have fallen short of glory to God. But he's given us a comforter so that we can strive to perfection. Not that we're going to be perfect, but so that we can strive to perfection. So basically, we got to be able to listen to God. Yes. And you know, not someone listening to the world. He also says, the prince coming. We standing around talking in the prince of the air, the prince of this world. You know, some of us are stagnant because we are saying our, the desires of our heart amongst the enemy. And the enemy, what, come on now, say it with me. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So why are you saying the, the desires of your heart? Telling the secrets that God has told you amongst your enemy. Who's your enemy? Huh. Well, anybody that, you know, God uses these hands to bless. He uses people's hands to bless others. So therefore, the enemy uses people's hands to destroy others. Uh -huh. Do we would you recognize that? Yes. So if God is a spirit and he uses us to bless, the enemy is a spirit and he uses those same people sometimes to destroy us, to kill us, to bring us down. So I want to ask you a question. With the girlfriend or, or boyfriend or whatever that you're telling all your business to, when they go through something, how you know they ain't gonna throw you under the bus? All right. How you know that they're not gonna come and, and tell all your business in the street and put you out there? You know, how you know they're not jealous? Do you know your person? The person that you talk, are they a friend or are they an enemy? Who did Jesus call a friend? He called Judas a friend. Yes. Because your friend is the one who's able to do what it takes to get you to the another level. Uh -huh. Judas had Jesus crucified and got him to another level. Mm -hmm. That is your friend. Your friend is not somebody that's sitting in the comfort zone with you. Comfort will kill you. Because being in comfort, you can't move nowhere. You're just in comfort. You're stagnant. You got to be in a position to where you're able to move and be propelled to your purpose. Are we being propelled to our purpose today? Mm -hmm. So while we're sitting around and the enemy is around, Jesus is telling the disciples that his time has come. You know, the enemy is coming. You know, the prince of this world is coming. And he said, and he have none, none in me. Nothing in me, which means that he has no interest in Jesus. Like I said, it's going to be short and sweet. Are we hanging around people that have no interest in Christ? All right. Uh-huh. Are we so caught up in people that have no interest in Christ to where we don't even realize that our spirit is acting like it don't have no interest in Christ either. You know, we look at people and how they dress and how they walk. You know, people looking at Dr. Bell lately because I'm going through something. You know, God is humbling me in some areas. And, you know, my financial state is not as I would like it, not as it should be. You know, just because you see the Cadillac and you see the wigs and you see the smile on my face, you don't know my story. Then, you know, People say, why? Uh, somebody asked me the other day, why are you looking all disheveled or whatever? Why fix your hairline? You know, whatever. Sometimes I wear my scars because if you don't see scars on people, how you know they've been through something that you can relate to what you've been through? Mm -hmm. I'm standing up here with half my manicure done and half my nails off, you know. I'm not worried about my my flesh and what is shown on my flesh. I'm not trying to glorify my flesh. I'm trying to glorify God. You know, if I gotta be so scared that I can't show you what my eyelashes ain't on or one is crooked or sometimes, like I said, I can't get my nails done like I want to get it. Or, so, you know, my car got a dent in it. If I can't go nowhere because my car got a dent in it, who am I gonna relate to? Whose life is perfect? Like I say, God got me on that church hurt thing. We got to be careful how we relate to 
people. Because a lot of people are not coming to church because the very church is hurting them. Yes. We can't judge people by, they, by what they wear or whatever. I know a lot of people, and I know some particular elite people who got a legion of demons, and you can tell they got they doing all kinds of manner of evil and everything, but I understand that that's a wall that they put up because they've been rejected and they've been hurt so much. They got a lot of hurt going on on the inside of them. And I know that because God allowed me to get close enough to them to where they're intimate with me. Come on now, intimacy ain't got nothing about being in the bed. Intimacy is got about being an emotional attachment with somebody, being a friend to where you know that they are. We gotta take time to sit around and get stay around people long enough to know their heart and not the person that they show us. Yes. You know, the, sometimes the first person you see is their impression, but it ain't who they really are. Sometimes we gotta be able to see people get close enough to them where they trust us to give us their heart. Yes. I know some hearts of some people yes. that's in the world, but they have been backslidden. Because they've gone through so much church hurt. Right. And I understand the reason why they're doing the things that they're doing, like I said, is because they built a wall up. And those, the legion of demons are acting as a wall. Because when you talk to them, you hear their heart. Out of the mouth, the heart speaks. That's yes. true, y'all do know that, right? Yes. Out of the mouth, the heart speaks. So when they speak, they sound like Christ, but they don't look like Christ. All right. So how can we judge a book by its cover? We are turning people away simply because we looking at the outskirts. Well, that comes to us. I don't mean to get on us ATM. I, I, I was telling God, you know, they ain't gonna let me preach no more when I start talking like this because when are we in the world acting in a way that represents God or are we in a world Acting, you know, when somebody get on us, we get on them. Uh -huh. Our mouth go off. You know, sometimes we want to cuss them out, go up one side, down the other, and then we want to come in here and hold up holy hands. In right. here is not where you're supposed to be saved at. Uh -huh. It's out there in the world is where you're supposed to be saved at. Yeah. Now, I know this ain't no good, feel good message, and I know uh -huh. I, I appreciate on, the time that Dr. Uh, Williams have given me, but I'm going to say what thus said the Lord. Yes. I've got to tell the truth. we got to do better, y'all. Yes. we got a whole church out there that's, I'm talking about the one that's backsliding. You know, the scripture says he's married to the backslider. Yes. We ought to know the ones that's out there that belong to us. Amen. We ought to know the ones that's out there that should be in the kingdom. We ought to know the ones that's out there that's gone through so much church hurt to where we need to wheel them back in to get them right so that they can go back out and help those that's lost. Exactly. We ought to know the ones. And we know the ones by the spirit that bears witness with yes. us. We can't look at what they got on. We can't hear the good words that they speak or whatever and yes. then think that that's them. You know, sometimes people just come up and bully through the pulpit. You know, I've been in situations where people have bullied me across the pulpit. Those same individuals that's in the world that I happen to be in the world with, they have bullied me in my situation at my job. So therefore, we got to act like Christ all the time. Yes. We got to act like Christ in season and out of season. Yes. I'm, 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 I know it's handy to me. But those are those that are hurting out there. Yes. And they want to come in. But the very people that, well, that they want to come in to, to the very people, we're the ones keeping them out. That's right. That's right. We're the ones that's judging them. Yes. We're the ones that's, you know, telling them you can't do that. I saw many me standing up here auditioning for one of the best nightclub uh, block party thing where she was standing up here singing. <laughs> I said, she auditioned and she sounded real good. And I'm glad she's doing that. Because you know what? My daughter, 
she shows God more than she shows that. She, she, she references God more than she shows that. People always putting their mouth on people that you know are out in the world because we work in the world, but they don't realize that we still honoring Christ. I talk about fingers all the time. Because his fingers go so fast, you know that that's a gift. That's a gift. But I know him to be a man of God. He shows the man of God more than he shows the being the what the number one block party in Las Vegas. So if she is to go that way, she gets one more. If she is to go and get on that payroll, I have no problem with that. Girl, go on and do your thing. Maybe that's God's purpose for you. I have no problem with that. But what I'm saying, are we making sure that we are honoring God and what we do in our behavior right. and what we're saying uh -huh. versus out there making money or trying to please people? Uh-huh. I got three points I have that I definitely want to get to that I have for you to take home today. But let's get to verse 31 first. Verse 31 talks about being in contrast. It begins with a contrast. The word is but. He talks, you know, saying that the, the enemy has nothing in him, but that the world may come, that they know that I love the Father. Uh -huh. That, I don't know what's going on with this. That, um, he says all that to say, but the world may know that I, that I love the Father. When people look at us, do they know that we love the Father? I'm going to really take a self reflection and see do the world know that you love the Father? Or are we promoting our idolatries? You know, we into that. Or, you know, my thing is therapy. I'm a therapist. I finally got my intern number, y'all. And I have been kind of scared to put it out there because, you know, once you put it out there, you know, the enemy comes and and you know they want to take your head off and you know they want to hook you up with people that ain't supposed to be hooked up because they done messed up and been on, they on this certain type of list that they ain't supposed to be doing therapy or business anyway and if I hook up with them the enemy gonna take me down after 14 years of getting here I'm careful about what I, where I put it or where I give it to I'm going to open up cash payments or whatever, but I'm just saying I'm careful about who I give to or who I hook up to or who I link up to. I'm going through a situation right now, and people are asking me, well, why don't you just quit y'all in degrees? You go and do what you need to do. Go get you another uh, office or even do on your own or whatever. And because Jesus walked in obedience, that's the next part of the the scripture says, as the Father gave me commandment, even so I do. But because I walk in obedience to God, and God has not released me from the organization that I'm at, I stay where I am on post. Regardless of what i got to go through, regardless if the ship is rocking, regardless if I'm not making the money that I think I should be making, I serve God. Do we serve God with our mouth or with our heart? You know, yeah, I could jump out there and make all the money and start money just start bling bling and get to flowing. But is it what God wants me to do? You know, when God calls you to do something, there's a greater purpose. And when you're walking in the glory of God, see, this is what got to me. When you're walking in the glory of God, that is God's glory being shown through you. So if God's glory is not being shown through you, he's not getting the glory. And the scriptures say, everybody that say, Lord, Lord, ain't going to make it either. So if God's glory is not being shown through you, then whose glory is? Is it your glory? Or is it the enemy's glory? So I got to walk in God's glory even with my intern number because it all belongs to him. Everything that he did, my life. You know, it says when we are a living sacrifice, that means our life, everything belongs to him. Our whole life, our whole heart, not just a little bit. Whatever area you got lacking in your life, unless God is teaching you a lesson, 
unless God is humbling you in some areas, every area that you have in your life that has lack, that's the part that don't belong to God, that you don't have with God, is what I'm saying. If you put God in that situation, it's, it can't do nothing but overflow, because that God is overflow. He is increased. So if, look at, take, you know, look at yourself, self-reflect. Is, is God in my finances? Is God in my children? Is God in my health? We gotta pay attention. We gotta make sure God is in everything that we do. Yes. We gotta have some, we serve his command. He said, if you love me, you'll obey me. That's right. So we gotta obey him with, even with our temple. That belongs to him. We can't do what we wanna do with our temple. We can't wear what we wanna wear with our temple. Our temple gotta go to God. I wanna give honor to Minnie Me today. I had spoke to her about ministry. And I didn't have to say nothing again. She made herself available to come and hear minister. She took her shoes off because she knew she couldn't minister in those shoes. When we come to minister, are we coming just a little cute? Or are we coming to be readily available for Christ and whatever he want to do? Sometimes we got to be, and I have y'all can see me on videos. I've had to roll on the ground with everybody else that was going through to bail. I've had to roll on. I've had times where people cover me, and I've had times where I've had to cover people. You know, as they in positions that wouldn't be right, let's just say, for the world. You know, I can't have be bending over and my dress is up. I see everybody see my business. So are we coming to the sanctuary? I'm not saying coming to church because we are the church. We go out there and be the church. You don't come to church. If you come into church, that's what's wrong with you. You're not supposed to come to church. You're supposed to be the church. Right. So when we come into the sanctuary, because we not not to forget to assemble ourselves together, when we come into the sanctuary, are we coming in to serve? Are we coming to look cute? Or coming in to get what we can get? All right. What are we coming into the sanctuary for? All right. I know it's heavy. And I know we got another service to go to, but it's needed. Because God, if I was to title this, he told me a peculiar people. Yes. When we go to the next service, we're going to go as a peculiar people. Peculiar meaning particular meaning belonging to somebody. He calls us a royal priesthood. Yes. So we can't go somewhere looking like everybody else. Uh -huh. We go somewhere looking like a peculiar people. Yes. Looking like we belong to God. Yes. So do we do that? Mm. Do we want to do that? Even so I do, Jesus did, he followed the commandments you know, Jesus was the word, and he followed his own word as he asked to his father. The last part says, arise, let us go thence. I don't know why I bring my notes, because I don't let me get to them. He said, arise, and let us go thence. He said, get up. Yes. The time has come. Yes. He done told you, I'm, I'm tired of talking. I'm not going to talk no more. Here come the enemy, the prince of the air. He's coming, the prince of this world is coming. It ain't time to talk no more. It's time to be about our father's business. Right. He said, let us go forth. So are we ready? Uh, He's equipped us. Yes. Are we ready to go forth? I'm trying to move so I don't do that. He, are we ready to go forth out there and be that peculiar people that the world needs to see? Uh, because it's the peculiar people that's going to draw the world. Peculiar people love others. Uh -huh. Peculiar people aren't selfish to where they're self-centered and always thinking about themselves. Peculiar people are a mind that's always on somebody. Y'all know the story about, you know, the, the, there's heaven and hell. In, in hell, they got the pitchfork standing straight up, but in heaven, they got the pitchfork pointing at the other person. So when they get ready to feed the table, in hell, they can't eat because they pitchforks are sitting straight up. They don't want to feed nobody. But in heaven, the, the person is taking their fork, pitching on somebody else's plate, and feeding that individual, and everybody's getting fed. Are we like the table sitting in hell, or are we like the table sitting in heaven? 
Are we more into the community, trying to help the community, or we just want to have our 40 acres in a view? Uh -huh. Are we still so much into ourselves? You can't, you can't come into here. You can't come into the sanctuary. You can't come into church in the ministry in God and be so selfish. Uh -huh. You can't do it because love goes forth. It connects with somebody. You know, he created us to be, well, he, man should not live alone. That means we can't be by ourselves sitting in isolation. No man or woman is an island. When you sit by yourself, all by yourself, like Uncle Scrooge, y'all know what Uncle Scrooge look like. When we're sitting like that and we sit with misery and we just can't do nothing and nothing is going right for our life, well, God ain't got no hands he can use to bless you. We sitting up in there, but we, we don't want to be around nobody. We don't want the enemy to be able to get to us. But if we ain't got no hands with the enemy or God, they, nobody can get to us. We sitting there closed up ourselves. You got to be able to have, you know, a sound mind. God don't give us the spirit of fear, but a love, power, and a sound mind. We got to be able to reach the community. We, I was saying something the other day to somebody, you know, they was been so much church hurt and everything. They, they tried to do this and they tried to do that, but the, the community wouldn't receive them. And I said, what if Dr. Martin Luther King stopped doing what he was doing and said, well, they're not receiving me. Do you realize the rights and regulations and rules and stuff we wouldn't be able to have today? Because if he would have gave up, we wouldn't have the right to vote. We wouldn't have the right to walk in the front door. We would have a lot of rights if people gave up. So God don't give us a spirit of fear. Like I said, but a love, power, and a sound mind. You got to be able to get your emotions together to where you can go out and deal with people. Because people are going to hurt you. Some of it's not intentional. Some of it is intentional. I'm not going to sit up here and lie to you. But we got to be able to be a peculiar people. A peculiar people is a person that loves others like Christ loved the church. You got to be, I don't care what walk of life they come from. Homeless, of the, you know, in the world, sin, I don't care what walk, you know, we, you know, people, we always talk about people and their sins or whatever, but you know, the very sin that you talking about is going to get you in the same place with the very sin that you talk about. Just because they see, you see that outward sin, don't talk, you know, you, the, your iniquities, the lying, the hate, the jealousy that's on the inside of you is going to end up in the same place of the people that you're talking about. Amen. We got to be a peculiar people. A peculiar people. Now I'm going to close with these three points. There are three points I want y'all to think about this week. And really, think about it for your soul salvation. Number one, we walk around glorifying God. That means to exhibit the glory of God by loving God in people. We do that by looking at their heart and not their flesh. Get close enough to people to look at their heart, to hear their heart. If people are so bound up to where they don't feel comfortable to be close enough to you to tell you their business or whatever, then that's not something in them, that's something in you. If people can't trust you or they don't feel comfortable to come trust you, that's not in them, it's in you. As a therapist, I gotta build rapport. I gotta make people trust me or lead people to trust me with their deepest secrets, their traumas. The stuff that they don't tell nobody else. And they gotta be know that I got I'm by my confidentiality law, that I gotta be bound by confidentiality so that I don't go out there and spread their business. As a therapist, if I go out there and spread their business, I could be brought up on charges, lawsuit. But in the church, if somebody gives you their whole heart, their secrets, do you run out and tell everybody? Can they trust you with their stuff? We gotta be able to peculiar people. They gotta be able to know that they can come to you and they can lay down their stuff at you and it ain't gonna go nowhere but right there between you and them. That's how you walk in the glory of God. You walk in the glory of God by loving on somebody just the way you would 
have them love on you. Maybe some of the things that are happening in your life is because you're doing the very same things to other people. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to go there. You know, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Some of us do that. We do unto others because we're doing bad on the other people. So we got to make sure that we're not doing that and we're glorifying God through us. Through loving somebody else. Number two, we are not to be in love with people, but be in love with Christ. Being in love with people usually holds us back. But being in love with God allows us to love others past their faults. When we find ourselves in love with people, people, you know, they go through their stuff, they harm, they disappoint us, and then, you know, we got grudges and we don't want to talk to nobody or whatever. But you know, we got to be in love with God. Being in love with God allows us the comfort to go ahead and love people. Because like I say, people up there, going, people aren't perfect. People, you know, they got sin just like you got sin. So if we put all our love in God, in Christ, we are able to love them as he loved us. So make sure that you're loving, you're in love with Christ. Like I say, God is a jealous God. If you're in love with somebody more than you love with, if in love with Christ, maybe that's the reason why stuff is going on in your life. Because you're in love with somebody, a person, a thing, or a place more than you're in love with God. He said, I'm a jealous God. He'll take you from you and it'll start getting rocky. He'll cause a storm or whatever to put your focus back on him. So when you're in love with Christ, it causes you to be in love with your enemy. And your enemy, like the Good Samaritan, I was talking on the podcast, the Good Samaritan, he could stay there with him and keep him, but he made sure he was breathing. He put him up in a, in a hotel to make sure he got himself together. That was his enemy. And he went on about his business. Are we able to do that for our enemy? Those that have come against us, those that have hurt us, we say we like Christ, that's when we're going to be tested. Because God is going to send your very enemy to you to see how you respond or how you react to that individual. And when you pass that test, then you can say, oh, I'm like Christ. But if that enemy comes to you and you turn up your nose and go about your business and you can't help that individual, you ain't nothing like Christ. You got to go around outside like that. Make sure that what's just coming out your mouth is lining up with what's in your heart. Number three, and the last point. Make sure that we're representing God more than representing anything else in the world. We say we love God, but it is what we do in our behavior that represents what is really going on in our hearts. Are we acting in a way that the world sees who we represent? Like I say, I'm Dr. Bell everywhere I go, even at work. I don't turn it off. People know who I love, people know who, because I, you know, I got time to turn it off, because I'll be around the corner and somebody says, I'll see you doing something, so and so. You never know when your leaders or whatever is going to show up or whatever. So why don't you just walk in the office anyway? Then I ain't got, I hate feeling like a lot and I can't stand to be around liars. So I just, I just walk in truth. I walk heavy, as they say. Um, so I'm not saying that everybody got to walk heavy to each his own. I'm just saying that's the way I do. When people come to me, they know, everybody know me as Dr. Bell. They know me as a woman of God. They know me as a woman of faith. They know, even when I teach my groups, you know, I know it ain't Medicaid compliant. I'm sorry, but I can only teach what's on my heart. And, and the word is on my heart because that's what I stay in. That's what I resonate in. That's what my doctor is in, biblical studies. It's not in psychology. I give homage to God. I'm not a doctor of psychology, but anybody that thought different, I'm a doctor of biblical studies. So what I'm saying to you is make sure that you are representing God. Even as a therapist, I represent God. A therapist looks at the flesh and studies the flesh, you know, psychology, a behavior analyst, you know, at the flesh. But I still represent God in, in looking at the flesh. So when I look at the flesh, and I, God, I ain't going to tell my secret, you know, when I go to the people, God has already showed me stuff about these people. So what I do is I don't tell them what to do. I just guide them to the help that they need. 
or I guide them to the answers that they need. God had already revealed to me what's going on. So even in that, even in my office at work, the comforter goes with me. Do you think God is home? Do you wake up with God? Do you drive with God in the car? Where is God at? Is he like your imaginary friend? Is he with you all the time? Do you reverence him at every moment given of the day? Do you reverence him everywhere you're at? Then we had a testimony in group the other day of, of somebody overcoming something and the Holy Ghost showed up and I took off running at work. I said, don't worry, me. don't mind me, I'm just, I'm running, I got to go. You know, the fire was in me. Because I knew what that overcome meant to that individual. And the Holy Ghost allowed me, that was you. Because if I hadn't touched that individual, the way I, that God called me to touch that individual, that individual would still be in some bondages. Yes. So I don't just praise God in here. I don't just run, you know, in here. If the Holy Ghost show up on my job or where I'm at, I'm gonna take I'm running there too. So are we afraid or are we embarrassed to take off running? Are we embarrassed to show who we belong to? Like I said, that's my closing. I want to say, make sure we take these points and look at ourselves. Because we always trying to look at everybody else and be judgmental and pointing at everybody else and we missing the spot. Because the only person we can control is ourselves. That's the only person we can change is ourselves. You know what? God can't even change you. I know that's, you know, you know, that sounds bad for some people. But God himself can't even change you. You know why? Because he gives us the power of choice. He gives us free will. He doesn't force himself on us. Love does not force itself on you. He don't force himself on you. So if you got some love in your life that's being forced, that ain't God. I, I think you need to go to God and talk to him about it. So if God can't force you to be something that you don't want to be, why would anybody else be able to? You got free will. You got the power of choice. Only you have the ability to say whether I want to go to heaven or whether I want to go to hell. Only you. And if there is anybody in here who has not made that decision and would like to make that decision, I'm going to ask them also to open the door to the church.